Excel has an outlining feature, which could be ideal for presentations. We're looking at a worksheet called Projected Budget 2017. In this worksheet, there are formulas in column E that tabulate data from the left, and in column I, column M, and farther off to the right for the fourth quarter as well, and also a grand total. There are formulas in row 7 that are tabulating data from above. Same thing happening in row 13, 14, and then farther down the list here in row 33 and 35 as well. If you're about to present this data at a presentation, I think a lot of people would agree that's way too much information on the screen. So what you could do manually ahead of time is highlight these columns using the control key, highlight these, and highlight all the monthly data. Just using the control key, moving across, right click and hide. And that's certainly a lot less. And possibly we could even hide some rows. Maybe we don't need to see the detail here. So we could do something like this and start our presentation with this information being hidden. So that's not too much to be showing at once. But in making the other data visible when needed, we've got to go through the command sequences. And sometimes there's the thought that when you're using Excel for presentation purposes, you want to keep to a minimum the use of commands and sequences, even when they only take a few seconds. So let's reconsider this list here. I'm going to press Control-Z to undo, go back to its original look, and suggest that possibly we can use a feature called outlining. And anytime you have formulas that tabulate data from the left or from above, or maybe in a totally different situation where you're tabulating data from the right or below, you could consider using this feature. There's nothing unusual in this worksheet, really. There are lots of formulas and all that. There are summaries in column E and I and so on, as I suggested. But with the active cell somewhere within this data, we can go to a feature on the Data tab. It's in the group called Outline. And you'll see the words Group and Ungroup, and also the word subtotal. That's a feature we're going to take a look at also. And some of you might be familiar with that feature. It's often associated with large lists of data. For the data we've got here, I'm going to click the drop arrow for group and choose auto outline. And suddenly we see new sections on the screen. Above the data, we're seeing a gray area with the numbers 1, 2, 3. Off to the left, we're seeing the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also some symbols here. These are called outlining symbols over to the left outlining numbers. I'm going to press the number two where we see the vertical one, two, three. Watch the data. It collapses. We are not seeing those monthly columns anymore. They're hidden. Over on the left-hand side, I'm going to click the number three. A portion of the data will collapse, but not all of it. Click two, more of it collapses. Now, we could be starting a presentation looking like this. If you don't want to see those outlining symbols, now I think much of the time you do want to see them because you want to be able to expand and collapse whenever necessary. But if for the moment, maybe you're going to be talking you know, five or ten minutes here, why not hide those? Anytime you press Control-8, you're either hiding the outlining symbols or exposing them. So possibly this is the screen view you want, and you can certainly zoom in and out using Control and the mouse wheel, that sort of thing. So we have this ability, when we get the outlining symbols back, to expand and collapse quickly and easily. I want the symbols back momentarily, Control-8. We've been talking about the budget here and there. Third quarter last year was a bit of a problem. Somebody's asked the question, could you show your breakout on the projections for the third quarter? Here's a plus right above third quarter. And now we're seeing some detail there. Because we have collapsed this vertically, by using the number two here on the horizontal one, two, three, I'm going to click the three, that expands it a bit, or the four expands it fully, at least vertically. So we've got that data there. Once again, we might want to press control eight so we see more information. Another feature that'll help here is something you can use at any time in Excel. If you're not using the ribbon menu system very much, and maybe you wouldn't in a presentation, control F1 will hide the ribbon, but not the ribbon tabs. So now we've got more display space. If you want to hide those ribbon tabs as well, control shift F1. So now we're not seeing any commands at all. We do have a lot more space on the screen. We might want to bring back as we need to from time to time, control eight, bring back those outlining symbols and outlining numbers. We were seeing the detail here earlier. Let's collapse it. Here's a minus. So at different times we can expand and collapse some of the inner features of this. And down the left hand side, maybe at some point, we do want to see the detail here in rows 4 through 14, but for the moment, not the expenses. We'll collapse just the expenses and see it that way. So we've got this quick ability to make changes here 
without going through command sequences that a lot of the times you just don't need to show other people. So this is a great tool, and there's nothing unusual about the data here. The thing that triggers the ability for these outlining symbols to occur is simply the presence of formulas that tabulate data either leftward or upward. At some point, we might want to get rid of the outline completely. We can certainly do that. We'll have to bring back the menu, Control-Shift-F1, if we've gone to full screen. This will bring it back, Control-Shift-F1, and then Control-F1 to get the actual tabs. And then on the Data tab, off to the right, we can choose Ungroup, Clear the Outline, and we're back to normal. And if we need to make changes from time to time, we can clear that as well, too. So we've got this quick ability to expand and collapse the list, without using those various features and commands. Now, another way to use this is indirectly, a feature that emerges when you use subtotal. On the first worksheet in this workbook, it's called HR list. I'm going to sort this first by status. I'll click in column F, click the AZ button on the data tab. It's in order by status. Then I'll click in column C, one of the cells there, click AZ. And now the list is in status order within department. Department is the major sort. I'd like to see subtotals after each department change here. So with the active cell in the list, and I would have made sure ahead of time that there are no empty rows in this list, double-clicking a cell here confirms that the list goes down to row 742. There's about 20, 25 departments. Every time there's a change here, I want to see a subtotal. So on the Data tab far right, subtotal at each change in department. Let's use a total here. And not too many of the fields can we really tabulate by way of total, but we could add up, for example, the compensation rate. If we had a new compensation rate, we'd certainly choose that, but not the columns off to the right. Possibly years of service. A lot of the times you'll use some here. You could use average too, but you can't mix them. Let's click OK, and now we've got some subtotals, as well as the detail. And here we see outlining symbols off to the left. We can collapse this with the number two, collapse it all the way to a single line with the number one there. We're only seeing the grand total. In these situations, too, often you'll have to make some of these columns a bit wider. There we are. And click the number two, and now we're seeing the year total, the comp total, and all of our subtotals in here as well, too. Notice the hidden rows. We're seeing rows 1, 7, 25, so on. The other data is simply hidden. Click the number three, the outlining symbol three, and we see all the data. If somebody raises the question, how many people are in this executive education group? Could we expand that briefly? I'll click the plus next to executive education, and there's the list. We've expanded just a piece of this. And here, too, we could collapse it with the minus that's over here. How about that ADC group? Much smaller group. There it is. We see the detail there, or we collapse it with the minus. So that's easily achieved. And since I did do a secondary sort here by status, we could go back to subtotal and also have subtotals by status. In other words, whenever there's a change in status. We probably want to do the same sums here, but by no means do we want to replace the current subtotal, although we could. I'm going to uncheck the box for Replace Current Subtotals. Click OK, and now we're seeing two layers here of subtotals, and that means in our outlining symbols off to the left, we've got four layers now. Click the number four to see the detail and all those subtotals within. Number three is what we just saw now with two layers of subtotals. Number two is the same kind of subtotals that we had seen earlier. So here too, we have that ability to expand and collapse, show this in different levels of detail. And although we'd be less likely to do it here, if someone says, for example, could you show me the full-time people in the admin training group? Here's admin training, here's the plus just to the left of full-time. And there they are. Those people are full-time in the admin training group. Once again, we can collapse this. Here we are getting outline symbols by way of the subtotal feature in Excel. And if you haven't used this feature, it's ideal, I think you could sense by the way we used it here, for certain kinds of lists. When you no longer need the feature, you probably want to get rid of it. But the problem with subtotal is that if you want to work with your data on a regular basis, anytime you want to do sorting or filtering or when you're adding new records, it gets just a little complex with having these other subtotals in the way. So it's easily used and set up, but when we don't need it, go back to subtotal and remove all, and we're back to normal. So two major examples of how to use the outlining symbol. We just saw how to use it in the subtotal feature, and earlier we saw how to use it simply by clicking inside of data and on the data tab using that group auto outline feature.